Okay, so what we're looking at now is a Raspberry Pi running as a TNFS server for FujiNet. So I'm going to log in to this Raspberry Pi. Okay, now if you do a CD slash TNFS, oops, you will see um, all the um, files and directories that are available to uh, vintage computers on your network. So I have an Apple II and an Atari directory. Ooh, Atari. So I want to go to Apple II. And um, there is a KFS23 directory. And let's see what we have in there. Nothing. OK. So what I want to do is copy from the boot partition. So I want to do ls slash boot. So I was able to use a PC to copy files to the boot drive, and these are just disk images. So let's go um, cd slash boot apple2. Okay, and ls in there. And I do have a kfest, k star. No? Okay. Um, Fuji Apple. Okay, and here I have a 4KFS 2023. Um, I want to copy that Protoss 242 image over. So let's see. Um, okay, so it was TNFS Apple II KFS 23. So I want to copy P star, P, yep, Protoss.po to slash TNFS slash apple2 slash kfest23 and then i want to go into the 4kfest and i want to copy all these disk images over copy star um, to slash tnfs apple2 kfest23 okay so now um, those are no longer needed on my boot partition but these will be mountable from a, an Apple or if any FujiNet on my network. Okay, so in here I have a Protoss disk which I'll use to start up the machine and then I have Fuji Apple versions from April, May and then two debug versions. Okay, so um, I've had to do some debugging of the network and those debugs are useful for capturing that. And then I have my Tic-Tac-Toe Dragon uh, disk from Kansas Fest 2022, which has the integer basic code to draw the dragon. Okay, so we're gonna play with this. So I'm just gonna leave this uh, running at, on the Raspberry Pi while I set up the Apple II GS. Okay, uh, some modifications to the uh, TNFS directory, I want to copy this version of Fuji Apple, and I also want to copy Integer Basic System. So this is from Call Apple. Um, somebody has created Integer Basic for Protoss, which is quite amazing. So I copied my Tic Tac Toe Dragon into that Protoss disk image. So that's the file I want to copy. INTD star.po to tnfs apple2 kfest23 and now let's cd there and ls minus l okay so i could delete fuji apple.po because i copied the version that i wanted just to keep track of the dates of what each of these fuji apples are because they are like things I've gotten off of Discord versus download from GitHub. So we can remove Fuji Apple.po. Okay, so when you're testing, you want to make sure you got the right version or the latest version from a reliable source. Okay, we're going to turn on this Apple IIGS, which has a FujiNet, and pray that it connects to Wi Fi, which it just did. And now we are booting into the FujiNet config. Okay, so what we're going to do here, I want to start from scratch. So I'm going to 
unmount all these and just show you how you mount from the TNFS server. Okay, so what I want to do is uh, go to 192.168.1.2, which is my TNFS server, and mount some Atari disk images into the Apple II. No, I don't think so. Uh, let's go here. You could try, but I wouldn't expect any results. Okay, let's go to KFest 23 and look at the disk images that we copied to that TNFS uh, uh, Raspberry Pi. Okay, so what I want to do is mount this one, um, which is my integer basic. Um, okay, so first of all, this is what I want to build, a tic-tac-toe client disk image, and this is just a copy right now of this Protoss image. So I'm going to select this, and I'm going to mount it writable in drive one. So I press W, and now it's in slot one of the smart port. Now the next one that I want to mount is also on the server. So I want to go to Apple II, uh, KFest 23, and I want um, Fuji Apple, and I'm going to mount this as read only in slot two. And then I want the integer basic system disk. So, with my tic tac toe uh, program from KFS 22, so we'll go here, we'll go to Apple II, and we're going to remember where you're going. And I want. Um, this, uh, okay, the integer basic system with tic-tac-toe-2023.po, okay, and that's going in three, and I'll mount it, I mounted it read-only. Now I hit escape to boot the GS, and now it's booting over the network, and it's going to load that TTD client.po. so I hit escape, and it's taking a little while. Um, find, yeah, to load that disk image over the network. So there are some delays to be expected as you test this. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so something over the air. Trying to get to my router. Okay, escape. Come on, boot. Okay, now there may be issues booting over the network. So what I may want to do is copy that TTD client to the SD card. Okay, um, I'm going to retry this by using the SD card. Um, so what I want to do is go to the SD card and 4K Fest 2023, and I want my tic-tac-toe client in drive one is writable. Um, and then I want the copy to plus because I want to delete files from that disk. So it's in 4K first, copy to plus in drive two. And there's integer basic. We'll leave that mounted from uh, this. Okay, so this is read only, copy to plus, and now I escape. So you got to keep track of uh, your disk images, like which ones you want writable. <laughs> You don't want to overwrite things, and then you have more version control problems. Okay, escape to boot. All right, so now we are trying to boot from the SD card, and that worked. We are in Protoss. So what I want to do is, well, it has copy to plus eight four, but I want to tab over to, um, okay, there's the integer basic that I want, and it went to slot six drive two, interestingly. Okay, Protoss, where is copy two plus? Sometimes. Let's run this. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's catalog disk and question mark to see uh, the volumes. So it did not mount the copy two plus disk, um, but it did mount this guy from the network. Wow. Okay, so let's just do um, this. Let's work in here. Let's delete files. Where is that? Okay, delete files on which disk? Know where your disks are. Hello? Anybody home? 
So I hit question mark and it's, it has to go over the network to read that slot two uh, disk integer basic. So if you have an unstable network, you're gonna run into Apple problems. Reboot me. And let's see what it boots into. Okay. So let's try this again. Copy to plus. And I uh, don't need it. Well, let's uh, catalog disk and question mark. And okay. So now let's go in here. And uh, what I want to do is delete files from 5.1. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of anything I don't need. I really just need basic system. So we'll get rid of, uh, well, Bitsy is nice. Quit basic. Copy to plus, cat doctor, ADT. All right, just cleaning up here. Mini base I may need. Uh, all right, fast disk. Yeah, don't delete Protoss. Go. Okay, starting our tic-tac-toe client cleanup. Okay, catalog disk. All right, basic quit. Yeah, I could always just run basic system from Bitsy boot. Okay. Uh, let us do the copy files from the network. And it was slot two, drive two. Yes, integer basic. So see, slot two, drive one, it didn't mount from the SD card as I expected, but that's not a big deal. All right, I want to copy integer basic dot system. Let's copy Apple Vision as a test and my two tic-tac-toe dragons. All right, why not copy was? Yeah, see how much space? All right, fine. Okay, quit. Okay, so see, I can uh, reboot and use this, but now I want to go back to config. So I could press the soft reset button on the FujiNet, and I think I need some stylus to do that. FujiNet. <laughs> Now what happened? Wow. Oh wow. It moved in basic system to the top. All right, basic system. <laughs> Bye. Basic system. Okay. That's interesting. Okay, so how do you prevent? That's funny. How do you do this? By in basic. Okay. So prepare your images carefully. Okay, this is on a GS and 2.8 megahertz drawing. How nice. And let's see if the music is uh, fast or not. Bob Bishop presents Apple Vision Pro. faster than he ever thought it would ever run and it repeats and then you hit control C and you have a high-res font <laughs> for listing the program okay and break into the monitor GS 16-bit monitor running 1979 code Okay, we are now looking at an Apple II GS, which I just booted up, and this is just a basic program for startup. So it's booting off of a micro drive um, in slot seven. So what I have to do first to enable FujiNet is to uh, change, go to the control panel and uh, go to slots, 
and change slot 7. So I'm going to use built-in Apple Talk, and this is a ROM 1GS. Okay, so now I quit, and um, it's going to boot from the FujiNet right now, because there's nothing in slot 7, and there is FujioNet, which is the next release of the firmware. Okay, now it's trying to find my FujiNet, which is called Mount Fuji. It's trying to find my network, and um, this may take a few attempts. So let's try that. Uh. Now, sometimes I need to plug in power into the FujiNet before it'll find the network. Um, this. Uh, is wireless, so you know what it takes. Rescan, but I could also skip it and uh, just use things on my SD card here. Okay, but what I really want to do is go to this TNFS server, which is on my local wireless network, and TNFS local is the host name for it. So I'm going to try this a little bit more. All right, sometimes power cycling works. Sometimes it don't. Okay, uh, one thing to do when entering your password is to make sure your caps lock key is set correctly. So you could type the password correctly if it uses lowercase letters. Uh, boy, what is it, my password? There we go. Come on, you could do it. You could do it. I had caps lock on on the previous attempts, and it's still not finding it, but it may work if I uh, escape, turn it off again. I don't know. So now it's going to boot. But now I could press the soft reset button on the FujiNet and see if it will find it this time. Let me reboot. Load FujiNet. So you press the soft reset button when you're in Apple Protoss and you want to uh, reboot into config. So now, where is it? Where did Mount Fuji go? Somebody's dryer has an IP address. How nice. Oh, here it is. Okay, not good signal, even though it's in the room. So um, if you want to test powering the FujiNet externally, you get one of these little Apple chargers and a... Um, mini uh, micro USB cable and plug that into the FujiNet. Okay, so what just happened is I plugged in the power to the FujiNet without um, turning on the GS and it connected to Wi-Fi because it had the correct password in memory. So now I'm going to turn on the GS. ROM 3. Okay, and it should go into FujioNet. That's config. And just so you know, if you press C, you can see the IP address that uh, the FujiNet got assigned. And you could also reconnect from here, so you don't have to turn off your machine all the time. You could just keep reconnecting if you're having trouble getting on Wi-Fi. Okay, so what I want to do now is uh, instead of copy to plus, I want to get um, the um, debug version of the, um, let's go in there, Apple II, KFest 23. I want debug one to be mounted because I want to copy some files from that. So let's put this in slot two as read only. So, um, smart port drive, the first drive is the, per, what I'm preparing, the tic-tac-toe client. And then um, this will have some of the test programs, and uh, this I've already used. I copied everything I wanted from that, so I'm going to eject it. And now I'm going to hit escape, and, oh, I have to hit tab, and then hit escape. Now it's booting.
Okay. And it booted into integer basic, but I could type by in capitals and go into basic system. Okay, cat. So um, now I can also uh, just take a look here. The other drive has Fuji.apple. So those are the things I want to copy. Okay, so um, yeah, those are the test programs for Apple networking. Okay, well, I'll get to that later. I want to show you how I take that integer basic code and move it to AppleSoft. Okay, let's reboot integer basic dot system and cat. Okay, so what I want to do is load TTD dot dragon dot 2023 okay and you could list it at 2.8 megahertz now this actually called some programmers aid music routines but from this protoss version of integer basic it doesn't look like that they implemented the programmers aid rom yet but you can hit it return and see the image okay then you hit enter and it crashes Okay, so that's some work for the integer basic folks to look at. But uh, now, see, I hit Control C and it brings me into AppleSoft, but uh, a non working version of AppleSoft. So I'm going to do a 6 Control P. What is that going to do to me? I'm trying to boot drive slot 6 drive 1, and uh, this is in slot 5. Let's try PR number 5. Okay, there we go. We're booting into Integer Basic again. So what I want to do is get that code for the Dragon out into AppleSoft. So how are we going to do that? And I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. Let's see. Load TTD Dragon 2023 and list uh, 0, 100. Okay, skip subroutines and... Uh, so all I want is the drawing code. So what I want to do is change line one to say uh, print, and then I'm going to put control D, because you can't do character string for an integer basic. Open uh, DR, that's just a file name, I'm going to, a text file I'm going to create, and then, whoops, print, there's no question mark. Uh, control D, write DR, okay, and then list. I want the whole listing, and then uh, print Control D, close DR, okay, and then two will put an end statement there. Now let's uh, cat and run, and syntax error stopped at one. Okay, so this, uh, is that an integer basic syntax error? Yeah. Uh, list, print, control D. Let's see, did it do something? No. All right. So I may wind up doing this on a real DOS 3.3 disk with integer basic, which would be nice if I could just mount Okay, so FujiNet does have this um, mount thing. You can mount a floppy disk. So I want to do it that way. Okay, so what I want to do is buy... I want to reboot the FujiNet. Hmm. Okay, so I turned it off and on, but I didn't unplug power to the FujiNet, so the FujiNet uh, config didn't run because it's still thinking that I'm uh, still running. Okay, so I have to unplug power to the FujiNet now, and then when it turns on, it will run config. 
Okay, here comes, it's connected to the Wi-Fi, and FujioNet is here. Okay, so what I want to do is, so what I now want to test is using a disk to drive. So from my SD card, do I have my Dragon? Well, let's try it this way. Let's mount it from here, from Apple II, um, KFest 23. Now I want to mount the original DOS 3.3 disk that uh, I got off of GitHub. And I want to put it in slot five, well, this number five, which is disk two. Uh, so it's going to use disk two firmware emulated. And now let's escape to boot and see what happens. Okay, I should be able to do a PR number six. Now it's scanning slots. Okay, it actually is booting from slot six drive one and running DOS 3.3 and using this old two plus system master image to load integer basic. So the, this is what we had back in the 80s. You had to wait before you could get your integer basic prompt. And is it there? No, not yet. Okay, so now it's running, and you could actually see the whole thing run. Okay, that's interesting that the music was sped up at 2.8 megahertz as well. So this is actually calling the programmer's aid ROM with the music. But what I want to do now is um, write this code to a text file. So I'm going to type catalog and see what we got on this floppy. I.O. Error. Huh. FP. Catalog. Okay. So this is interesting. Um, the FujiNet as a disk um, mount. It uh, does a catalog from AppleSoft. But let's try this. Uh, load ttd.dragon. So this is testing the disk to device emulation. So this is loading integer basic. And then when I get my cursor, it's ready. It actually looks like an Apple II Plus. Okay, so now I want to try, see if I can write a text file. List 1, comma 10. Okay, 1. Print, and I'm going to put in quotes a control D because you can't do a character string 4 from integer basic. And I'm going to open a file called dr, and uh, then I'm going to print another control D, write dr, okay, and then I'm going to list, and then I'm going to print control D, close, whoops, Okay, so we'll do a quote. Yeah, see, integer basic checks for syntax errors as you type. So now I'm going to use the Apple screen editing, escape I, 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 space, and then use the arrow key, and then print a quote, control D, close. That closes all open text files, and then end. All right. Now let's just run this. Okay, it's listing to the screen, and I'm not sure if it did anything. Yeah. So this disk to device is not exactly as we expected, because if you're running this on a real Apple, that listing should go to the text file. Okay. Yeah, and uh, that write command should have created the text file. So, yeah, it's question, is this the operating system or is this the FujiNet controller?